rendering is a concept that gets thrown around quite a bit in in web development in general and then especially when you're talking about either Next.js or even talking about React.js. It's always kind of considering, okay, React.js is then going to render this to the page or Next.js is going to render this server side. But what does what does like rendering even mean? What even do these different environments of rendering mean? Like rendering on the server versus rendering in the client? What does that have to do with a request response life cycle and building hybrid applications? What does all this mean? Well, when I was starting out, I would have really appreciated a video that just kind of explained rendering and put some of these kind of concepts in the context of Next.js and React and kind of explain things a little bit more thoroughly so I could just have a better kind of mental model of things. So that's what I'm going to try to do for you here, kind of explain rendering, different environments, uh, request response lifecycle, and all that stuff. So first off, what is rendering? Well, rendering is simply the process of turning your code into visible UI. So in React, you write your JSX, which gets converted into HTML, and that gets rendered to your web page, and it turns your code into visible UI or into the user interface that you see here. So for this page that I created, I wrote some code that eventually got turned into these drop-down boxes here, this text on the page, this like gradient here for this title. All of this was just code that was turned into UI. So code that was just rendered. And with Next.js, rendering can happen on the server, the client, or both, enabling what Next.js kind of refers to as hybrid web applications that balance performance and interactivity. So let's go over some kind of overall key concepts to consider when it comes to rendering and different environments in which stuff can be rendered. So basically, you have the client, which is the browser that renders the UI from the server's response. So when you hear client thrown around, it's basically whatever the user is interacting with. So it could be the browser, it could be a mobile phone. All of these are kind of considered the client. And the client is going to render the UI based on what the server responds. So the server is just a backend machine that processes a request and returns data. Now, importantly, React as well as Next.js enables development across both environments using the same language. So in Next.js especially, you can use JavaScript both on the front end, the client, and on the back end, the server, to develop your application. To where in the past, it was very common to use maybe JavaScript for your client side stuff, but then you'd use a different language on the back end. And I generally really like being able to use the same language both on the client and on the server. Now, this kind of leads us into the request response cycle. As I mentioned here, the browser renders the UI based on the server's response. And the server processes requests from your client and then returns data. So they're kind of like interconnected here, which brings us to this kind of life cycle of request response. So effectively, the user is going to trigger a request from the client. It might be going to a certain URL. It might be clicking a form or submitting a form. It might be, you know, inputting something and then clicking a button. The user is going to trigger some sort of request. And then that client, which in web development is the browser, it's going to send an HTTP request to the server. The server is then going to accept that request, process it, and it might get more data from the database or a, a different API. It's just going to process that request from the client. And then once it processes it, it's going to return a response. And then the client is going to parse that response. That response might contain some data or some information from the database or different things like that that then allow the client to parse and render the UI based on that response. And then the whole process happens again when the user interacts with something else. So they do another URL change or they click another form or do something else like that. This whole process is triggered again to where your client and server kind of interact with each other to render your user interface and allow that interactivity that we've come to know in web applications. Now, importantly, there's this concept of a network boundary, which is like a conceptual line that separates the client and the server. 
In Next.js, you can use the directive use client or even use the directive use server to declare the kind of delineation between client and server, this network boundary. Now in Next.js, your components by default are going to default to server side components, but you can be more explicit about some different functions like with server actions and stuff like that to explicitly say this function is only going to run on the server. But then for other components that you want to be very interactive, you might declare that, okay, these are client components. They're going to be rendered on the client. Now, along those same lines, when it comes to the capabilities between client and server, they do differ at least to some degree. To where the server, it tends to excel at tasks like accessing the database, authentication, authorization, different, more kind of computationally heavy stuff like that, the server is, is great at. But then the client is going to be much better when it comes to interactivity and handling user events and just the overall kind of user being able to interact with your web page. So the client in the server, they are kind of better at certain things. So you wouldn't necessarily want to use just the client for everything. And you wouldn't necessarily want to use just the server for everything. And luckily in Next.js, you can kind of get the best of both worlds by building what they refer to as hybrid applications. So in Next.js, it can be helpful to think about your application code flowing in one direction, from the server to the client. Once the server sends the UI, the client takes over to manage interactions, which kind of hits on our previous note. The server and client, they kind of specialize in two different things, where the client's really good at interactivity, the server's really good at computation stuff, accessing the database, authentication, and sending data back to the client. And then once it does, the client takes over to manage those interactions. And when the client needs more data, it sends a new request to the server rather than reusing the original one. And this approach kind of makes it easier to decide where components should render and where to draw the network boundary, that distinction between client and server components. This kind of tends to encourage a clean flow to where the server does the heavy lifting and then the client adds interactivity based on the responses from the server. So the TLDR here is that rendering is the process of turning your code into a visible user interface. It can happen on the server, the client, or in a hybrid setup to where you render some stuff on the server and some stuff on the client as you see more and more in Next.js where you can decide where your code runs using one consistent language across both server and client side. The request response lifecycle is a big part of this where it starts when the user takes a certain action and then that triggers a request to the server. The server processes it, returns a response, and the client renders the UI and then repeating this cycle as needed and as the client interacts. It's also important to define the network boundary between client and server to split logic intentionally and securely. So really kind of, you know, having a think about, okay, do I want to render this on the server? Do I want to render it on the client? What do I want to ship to the client? And then Next.js ultimately recommends you to adopt a server first mindset to where you render on the server when possible and then add client interactivity as needed. So this kind of comes back to practically speaking in Next.js, you wouldn't want to make everything a use client component. You would just want to make client components for that specific stuff that needs to be interactive. So rather than making an entire page a client page, you would just create a client component that's maybe a button or an input and then kind of slot that into the rest of your page that's rendered still on the server and you kind of get, can get the best of both worlds with these hybrid applications. So hopefully this kind of cleared up some of the distinctions between rendering the different environments and how all this stuff works. I really would have enjoyed a video like this when I was kind of starting out, especially starting out with like Next.js and stuff, or even starting out in general with programming and stuff like that. So I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.